Welcome to a new amazing episode of All Things Delivered. Today we're going to be taking a look at location services with Here Technologies. And specifically, we're going to learn more about how location services and intelligence can help to make your supply chain more resilient and cost-effective. Technology innovation has never moved as fast as it is today, and it will never move as slow again. So now is the time to accelerate your supply chain transformation at the speed of AWS. Join us to explore the supply chain of the future today. Hello there, I'm your host, Michele. And I'm Michael. I bring the perspective of the solution strategy. And I bring the technical practitioner perspective. And later on, we're going to be joined also by another expert, Kimberly Haggerty. For intermodal and overland transportation, precise inventory and asset geopositioning is addressed by solutions like Here Technologies Track and Trace. We'll explore how to effectively aggregate data, but also use machine learning to enrich supply chain visibility. Hello, Arminio. It's great to see you again. Would you like to tell us more about your company? Absolutely. First of all, thank you very much, Michele and Michael, for having me with you today. Yes, here Technologies is the world leader in location intelligence. What does this mean? It means that we, uh, we have created over the past 25 years the most accurate digital representation of the world. Uh, here Technologies started with the creation of maps for automotive uh, use cases. So is the map that is helping you to go from A to B. But over the past uh, years, we have been evolving this uh, digital representation of the world, what, what is behind map. So the static data integrated with the dynamic data and, uh, and feeding a platform which is providing through services access to this incredible amount of data sets, rich data sets. So dynamic data are like, um, you know, uh, what is happening on the, on the roads, uh, sensor data coming from vehicles and things and people. And with this, we built um, a foundation for, for a platform which is providing data sets access through services that are needed for solving your location-related business problems. And uh, talking about business problems, what, what are the, uh, the most relevant challenges that you see coming uh, uh, from the industry, working backwards from your customers' needs? Uh, with this platform, we cover multiple industries. But what I'm going to focus right now is what are the challenges that I see in my role from the transport and logistics space. Uh, in the past month, what has been happening in this domain with the disruption that we had due to the shortage of uh, supply, the example of the shortage of some conductor generated impact everywhere in any kind of industry. Uh, and basically what has been surfacing, how fragile was this uh, space because we have been, let's say, moving uh, workforce all around the world to reduce uh, the labor cost, but we have increased ma massively complexity into the transportation domain. The high fragmentation, the low degree of digitalization leads to the need of now having, when you have a shortage and delay, having more visibility. And this is the first challenge that we need to solve. How can I make my a supply chain more visible to me as a practitioner. Uh, obviously, what we see as well as another challenge is the consumer experience, which is driving us to a much higher degree of satisfaction that we need to provide. Due to certain situation in some part of the world, we see massive, massive problem with the driver shortage. And last but not least, sustainability is in everybody's agenda to make this industry much greener than it is. Providing uh, better data and better services for, for example, avoiding the trucks to drive empty like it does today, that would re reduce CO2 impact and drive us to a better sustainable uh, logistic industry. Knowing a little bit about your business, I would expect that in order to be able to do things like same day delivery and improve the customer experience, you need lots of data. It would be really interesting to understand how does Here Technologies deal with the amount of data that you probably have to consume? And can you speak to a little bit about the technical implementation of what, what you have uh, built? Sure, Michael. Indeed, you rightfully say it. We are collecting an insane amount of data and uh, we need to have uh, super fast computation capabilities. By an intensive usage of Amazon S3 services and Amazon EC2 services for storage and compute are a massive relief for us. We focus instead in this way on optimizing our algorithm to 
uh, train our machines, where thanks to your super fast computation and capability, we can rather uh, provide better insight and better prediction. Would you like to walk us through maybe a couple of examples of uh, here technologies, uh, customer success stories? Sure, Michele. One case uh, we observe uh, a good usage and a smart usage of our data is in, um, uh, in a, with a fleet uh, solution provider, which is providing video telematics and video capturing into the, the cab to track drivers to detect the movement. But when you correlate this with the uh, high quality data about, for example, the road roughness, and this can give, uh, combined with the uh, image that has been captured that you may be a bit distracted, well, that can help to quickly provide a prediction that you may have something going wrong. I seen this as a very smart and um, usage and uh, pretty advanced of our, our technology and services. Imagine if you have high accuracy of the track and trace, both indoor and outdoor, you know where the, th the things have been stored, you put it on your engines, you store it on your S3 services, and then you predict based on those historical data with an easy compute capability where you will find it, that's a massive improvement because this is downtime reduction that can definitely even save, save life. It'd be really interesting for us to know a little bit about how uh, here technologies architecture is going to evolve in the space of location intelligence. So now we need to move from geo, uh, geo data to geospatial space. So there is a, uh, from a, a 2D representation of the world, we now need to be able to provide the true index of the reality where we need to go beyond the 2D, beyond the maps. So not only uh, static content, dynamic content, we need to start creating uh, go through the third dimension, right? The 3D models which are needed. For the use case I was referring to indoor, to finding the service parts, or maybe for optimizing, you know, the future of the an autonomous uh, valet parking, or optimizing the floor uh, plan and the management of the warehouses where the goods are, are stored. Of course, what, what, what this drives, this drives to Higher, the higher needs of computation, higher needs of storage, because we are going to collect more and more data. And that's what we means more consumption of these services in agile manner. And as I said before, if the data are uh, normalized and there is interoperability between the data, this is going to make our uh, prediction much faster and much accurate. Because high quality data is important, high volume data is important, but fast computation of the data is equally important for that. Yeah, these are very compelling use cases. So you mentioned both uh, uh, the use of computer vision for in, in cabin safety, uh, uh, augmented with some external data, uh, and, and the second one about predictive maintenance. Uh, this, this is extremely uh, relevant to many, many customers across multiple industries. What, what, what is next, your solutions to help uh, companies with their supply chain management? Well, Michele, you, you see it and we all see that like this higher degree of visibility in the uh, entire, uh, say, management of the transportation of the materials and goods uh, is not just like a, a vision, it's more an increase of demand from all our customers. So we really need to be able to provide more accurate visibility, not only on where the things are. So nowadays we are already good, all of, all of us together and also uh, in, um, with an extensive usage of your S3 and EC2 services, we can provide accuracy on where the things are. But that's not enough. In the future, we need to provide more accuracy on how we can predict where they will be and how long does it take to get there. This is where the market is, uh, request is going. So what we all need to do is we all need to have data interoperability. And this is where uh, the data aggregation, data normalization, and that's a little bit of a stimulus to, to the industry, but also to our supplier and our customer. We jointly need to create an ecosystem where the data exchange is done in a much seamless manner. And we're very much looking forward for these type of solutions in the market, because that's where it gives us the possibility to uh, make easy prediction, which is what the customer wants and what he's asking us. Well, thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with us. It was really cool learning a lot about Here Technologies.
Indeed, thank you for bringing such relevant and interesting content to this episode of All Things Delivered. Thank you. Thanks a lot for having me with you again. I'm really focused on a lot of the content that was discussed around track and trace. And as a planner, track and trace is really important foundational data input that I need to plan across my end-to-end -end value network. So when you look about what they talked about for track and trace, what are some of the technologies that are helping me deliver the supply chain of the future today as I continue to build and innovate for tomorrow? Definitely, Kimberly, uh, cloud technologies can uh, support uh, track and trace at scale. You need to think that there are multiple data sources to achieve uh, uh, track and trace, especially if you are in a multimodal uh, fashion of transportation. So think about IoT sensors, think about uh, data coming from airplanes or from vessels and from trucks. So you need to ingest uh, a very uh, broad range of data. Uh, you need a, a certain uh, complexity in your uh, uh, technology stack in the backend. Yeah, especially with track and trace, right? You have so much data coming in. So data lakes, are, I think, are really important. Being able to have the data um, available to you and to be able to clean it using, let's say, data brew or uh, any kind of pipeline concepts, like, let's say, step functions and, and being able to coordinate and orchestrate that helps you into being able to take your data and get it into those planning systems. Yeah, I think, Michael, you mentioned two important services that uh, uh, AWS provides to customers. One is uh, Amazon DataBrew, and the second one is uh, Amazon Step Functions. So basically, these two services are uh, enabling a uh, uh, more automated uh, and uh, fully managed uh, extraction of data, and then a uh, uh, serverless computer can be used by uh, customers even to orchestrate complex functions that are repeating uh, uh, over a long span of time. And this is essential if you need to, to build a, a strong pipeline of data uh, into a service like, like Amazon S3. It's all about integrating the data, right? It's about taking the data from your various sources, like your IoT devices to tell you where you are, but then you got to take that and then somehow uh, geocode it or figure out where the location is. So track and trace is a foundational input, and you're right, Michael, predictive ETA is that second data input that I need, and that's probably one of the biggest data challenges I have is it's never right. It seems like every day I come to work, it's Christmas because I don't know what I'm getting until I get it. So I really need to understand maybe a little bit more on how we're helping to solve that problem today from a predictive ETA standpoint. Predictive ETAs are a little bit about geofencing, right? And I like to kind of parse what that really means. You have retail predictive ETA, and then you have what I would call a little bit more commercial ETA, where the retail one is like, how many stops away is my package? And is it going to be here by lunch? Or can I leave for a little while and come back? And, or am I going to miss my pack, my really expensive laptop or something like that, that I may have ordered. Um, whereas the commercial one, I think is more about flow control, right? It's about understanding what's coming inbound to your facility. And you may have multiple relationships that you have to manage and you might have multiple shipments coming in from different locations that you're gonna go through a break bulk process on, cross dock it, build a new shipment and out the door it goes. So it doesn't really help you to know that you're only going to have predictive ETA for one thing without knowing how that correlates to the rest of the things that are dependent. So this gets into dependencies. Using geofencing and test to have uh, uh, specific technologies at your disposal. So geofencing can be, uh, for instance, used through uh, Amazon Location Services, where you, you set some areas around a specific location, and every time uh, an object or a, an asset or a shipment leaves these premises that you mark with a geo, geofencing uh, perimeter, then you get an alert. And this pipeline of events can be enabled, for instance, uh, using uh, AWS IoT Core with some business rules that are set up in the service and then again with Amazon Lambda to trigger specific reactions and send out alerts with the Amazon Simple Notification Service to the end user, emails or text. And so you're going to be able to know when your shipment is going to be delivered to you. That's really going to help me with the planning solutions. And as always, I appreciate the technical insight that you help bring to Supply Chain Insights. My three key takeaways are all about using data as a corporate asset. And in order to do that, you have to focus on three key things, data connectivity, data visibility, and the overall operational intelligence to tie it all together. Thank you for joining us on this episode of All Things Delivered. And don't forget to join us on social media, hashtag All Things Delivered.